Okay, let's look at these few scenarios. So you have something important to mention to your supervisor. So you initially wrote an email, trying to really, you know, make it very concise, turns out to be three pages. Message is dense. You have a lot of emotions. As you're writing this, you're feeling some anger, some anxiety or sadness, or, you know, just feeling uncomfortable. And you know that your supervisor, when he receives it, he's going to feel some emotion. There are some heated topics. Uh, in here. But you don't want to be emotional, right? This business is professional. So you decide, well, I don't want to be emotional. You try to be as professional as possible and you write that email or you send it over chat. You don't want to make, you know, look weak. And there's this perception in the business world that if you show emotions, you're weak. You don't want to do that. So you don't want to be weak or be, you know, being taken advantage of. So you, try, you know, decide, I'm just going to be cool or try to pretend that I'm cool and send that email over. So you click on the send button. I've done things like this many times to employees or supervisors or, you know, uh, investors or other people, friends, and almost always I've regretted it. Um, because again, Written words only convey about, I think, 10 to 15% of the intent in the whole context. Phone calls, if you add voice, add another 30% or whatnot, but it's still not enough. You got to see the person's face. Anytime there is strong emotions, ask, have a, you know, try to meet in person or, you know, do a Zoom meeting at the very least. Avoid phone calls because it's just not enough, right? If you really care about the other side, um, or sometimes, especially if you don't care about the other side, you know, you want to try to see them face to face so that they can see that you're a real human being. We all have emotions. Emotion is what drives us. It's what um, gives us the fulfillment. That's what uh, gets up in the morning. So do not ignore emotions. We can be professional, but we got to be true to our emotions also. And uh, I'll have some other things to talk about emotions and how to handle that a little bit better. But um, again, on this situation, you don't want to send a three-page email and send it. Now, you could write that somewhere, but maybe just put it in the journal or write the email or write the letter and just delete it. Use it as an exercise to kind of organize your thought, but do not send that email over, right? Now, sometimes if you're a supervisor, they may break this rule, but if you, your supervisor is good, they will try not to break it, but they may break it if they're just so busy. You know, there's just not a way for them to have 100 one-on-one -on -one meetings. So they may send over email. There may be some emotions, but they will expect that you're a professional and you can take it, right? But if you're, if you're not getting a few hundred emails a day to respond to, I'm not talking about 300 spams. I'm talking about legitimate emails that, you know, require effective communication back. Then you got no excuse. You got to set up a meeting and have that meeting one-on-one. -one -on -one. Right. Um, very, very important. OK, let's look at another scenario. Scenario four, you have something very important. You want to ask your supervisor is about the company situation, how you think the company should go. You don't agree with some of the directions and you feel you're feeling uneasy and you care about the company. You want to make a positive impact. Now, your supervisor, uh, do they know these thoughts that you're having? They don't. Have you shared with them your insights? You haven't yet. But you're like, let me take courage and let me share these thoughts. So you take three days, you write, write a very careful email and you send it over and you're surprised. You thought that your supervisor would respond right away and your supervisor usually responds very quickly. It's been, a, it's been 24, 48 hours. You still haven't heard back. And now you feel like your supervisor is avoiding you. Did you do something wrong? Yes, you did do something wrong, right? Well, there are a few things you did wrong. One is anything that has to do with emotion, email is not the best way. 
your supervisor may not have received that email in a positive manner, or they might be just confused. They thought everything is okay, and what you, what is this? They just don't have time to digest, and they don't want to give you false information. So they may just be trying to avoid having that conversation until they really had more time to digest. But they're too busy. They don't have time to let you know that hey, let me get back to you because they got three hundred other emails and meetings that they have to do. And your email is on the very high on the list, but they got twenty other things that they have to take care of first before they can get to you. So you may think they're avoiding you; they may not, or they may actually really be avoiding you because they will, they don't know how to handle that situation, and they want to take some time until they're more prepared. But you should have never sent that email. Instead. You should have asked for a meeting, and you can. This you know, there is this concept about pre-wiring. You don't want to completely surprise the supervisor either. You don't want to send an email and say, "Hey Bob, hey Michael, I want to have a meeting. I need fifteen minutes of your time." And that's it. Vague. Your supervisor, let's say, comes into the meeting. Everything's happy, right? They they because so far all your communication with the supervisor has been good. And then you blurt out these things, and your su supervisor is surprised. They weren't prepared. It becomes a one-way conversation where you basically just blurt out stuff, and you didn't get that much out of it. Your supervisor is like, "Okay, let's set up a follow-up follow-up meeting to address this," but that meeting would have gone very, very bad. So, what do you do? Pre-wire to your supervisor. Or your client and say, "Hey Bob, hey Michael, you know I've been I've been struggling on whether I should share this or not. But after a lot of thought, because I care about the company, because I care about our working relationship, I want to share some of my perspectives and also ask for your input, ask for your feedback. Uh, I don't want to go into a lot of details." But I feel a bit uneasy about the direction of the company. But I want to share some more specifics and share、um, share a few thoughts with you. And I would love to get your feedback because I value your judgment or value your perspectives. I saw that in your calendar you have 15 minutes. Blah blah blah. You know. So anyway, if you do that, you pre-wire that concept. So that when the supervisor comes in. They know. Wow, you spent a lot of time. I appreciate that you are debating, that you are being conscious of my time, but I appreciate that you took the courage. In the first email, did they know you took the courage? They don't. You just say, "Can I have a meeting?" But the second email, they know you put in a lot of time. You are considerate, and you pre-wire the concept, so they're going to walk in that door with more empathy, with more understanding, with more compassion. Then, if they just walk into the meeting. Without knowing what you're going to talk about, notice how that email. You're also making it a two-way conversation. You're not just blurting out your thoughts. You're you've already said, "Hey, I value your perspectives and feedback." So then you share and leave some time for the supervisor to give you feedback. So you make it into a two-way conversation. Much more effective communications that way. And your supervisor is going to feel good about themselves, as well as about you, in a situation like that. Now, here is another thing you could have done to make this better. Some employees point out things that may be obvious to the supervisor already, because they know they have tons of other people that are probably reporting. In my professional experience, ninety percent plus people. Come back with issues that I already know about, but do not. But they do not come back with recommendations or solutions. Less than ten percent of the people will actually point out some things and say, "I put a lot of thoughts into this." And geez, I thought, "What could I? What could we do? What could I do to improve the situation?" And I have a recommendation. Right, very rare to have an employee who comes up with a recommendation, and this has to do with one of the core values of being proactive. But 
supervisors will always value those people who come up not only with problems, list of problems to solve, but who actually even put some thought into solving them themselves before they came, right? A lot of times I say, okay, well, that's the situation. What would you recommend? A lot of people say, I don't know. I'm thinking, okay, why did you, what is this? You want me to solve your problems? Or it may be my problem, it may be my team's problem, but you haven't put the thought, time to think about potential solutions? You want me to do the work? You know how much work I have? Couldn't you, be, couldn't you also have been compassionate towards me by at least putting even 15 minutes of your time thinking about what possible solutions you or the team or I could have done? Right? I mean, I may be sad. I mean, I won't be angry because again, 90% of the people don't ever take that step. But when 10% of the people do, I always super appreciate how considerate they were, how they tried to come up with recommendations or how they, you know, if they couldn't come up with recommendations, at least how they put some good, in, good, good amount of time thinking about recommendations or solutions to the problem, then just knocking my door and saying, Michael, you have problem X, Y, and Z. Because most likely I may know problem X and Y. And now, even if I didn't know about Z, would I be like, thank you so much for letting me know that on top of 200 problems I need to solve, now you pointed out 201st problem I need to solve. And I, do you really think I'm going to be so grateful that you pointed out? I'm going to be grateful you know, to you more than someone who didn't even mention the problem. So you get maybe plus one point. But if you come back and say, yeah, I've thought about these, Michael. And I was thinking, what would I do if I was in your situation? And maybe, you know, I went too far. But I tried to think about some recommendations so I can give you some perspectives on that. And I have two recommendations or two possible recommendations that may work. And, and you can say, I can go over it now, again, if it is very short. Or if you will... You know, you can say I've also put I've also printed these recommendations because I know I only schedule a 10 minute and I know you're very busy, but here it is. So if you want to read it and digest it, here it is. I can also uh, send it to you over email uh, and attach that if you want. I mean, that is a great communication. Okay.